Sports. As we take a look at the starting lineups, of course, Ohio State coming off its first loss of the season against the top 10 Iowa team, doing it without J.C. Sheldon and without Madison Green. This team has been really good this year. Two teams off to their best starts in program history. One loss apiece and a combined record of 12 and 1 against the AP Top 25. First ball, tapped out of bounds, it goes to Indiana in the home whites. Ohio State in the road red. A little anticlimactic after the tip, after this electric atmosphere where people were lining up two hours before tip. It's cold, too. This isn't just freezing. balmy weather. We're just outside hanging out. They are diehard fans. And Assembly Hall is packed tonight. Here is their freshman. Garden Gare Zone was the National Freshman of the Week a week ago. Ricky Harris runs the point for Ohio State. Without Madison Green for the rest of the season, it's Mike Sell. The second-year transfer gets Ohio State on the board. Indiana's going to try to tag Mike Sell on. Those screens are not going underneath because she's lethal from three, but Mike Sell reads the defense and is able to go in for a little baby floater. 2,000 career points now for Taylor Mike Sell. And before her season is done, she'll have 1,000 in two years at Ohio State. That's absolutely wild. Garzon buries a three. Yard and gear zone for Indiana has become one of the most impactful freshmen in the country because of her ability to stretch the floor and shoot. She's also 6'3 with tremendous size on the defensive side of the ball. Top three point shooter in the Big Ten. 50% she's averaging Ooh. from downtown. McMahon draws a foul on Parrish. She has just become the all time winningest head coach in IU basketball history. No game really faces us anymore. And I'm just so impressed with how Coach Moran has been able to stay so consistent with who she recruits, whether that be high schoolers or grabbing people out of the portal. Down to Holmes, averaging nearly a double-double in league play, and it's moves like that that have allowed her to score nearly 22 points a game. That's way too deep for Holmes to get positioning. If you're going to guard her one-on-one, -on -one, you have to push her out of the paint. There's that freshman McMahon you were talking about ahead of schedule. Kevin McGuff told us he felt like she could be a real contributor this year. But she's been a pleasant surprise for the Buckeyes. Here's Zong. All the way, and it deflected by McMahon. This is going to be a fun battle to watch between the freshmen tonight. Now Taylor Theory. That's tripped. Mika Lashikova from downtown. She is somebody that Kevin McGuff told us he wanted to see her get going, particularly after the Iowa loss. And there is Mika Lashikova oh, mixing on. it up defensively. Ooh, that was a great footwork, though, by Holmes. Just a blistering pace over these opening five minutes. Theory with the putback. She just simply does her work quietly, but she's so effective cleaning up boards on the other side. There's Parrish, two on one, gives it up to Holmes. Counted in the foul. Ten on the timer for Ohio State. It's down to Theory, tripped up, and a whistle. And it goes against Indiana. It looked like she got tripped up on first move. I mean, she tripped over Holmes' foot. It's a blocking foul on Holmes, so Theory heads to the line. She just kind of tripped over her foot, though. Lisa Jones, Kevin Patel. Sarah Scalia has checked into the ball game for the first time tonight for Indiana. Wearing number 14 in white.
McMahon, acting through the defense, lays it in. McMahon is like a Mack truck coming down the paint. You have to make sure you bring a body over to double her or just get out the way. But most importantly, Ohio State cannot get Holmes' position early on in the possession. And already a pick in the opening few seconds of that possession from Taylor Theory. Then she's tripped by Berger. And finally, Mike Sell corrals. That's a silky step back from Mike Sell. Mike Sell is a traditional three-point shooter. She led the nation at one point throughout her career, but now she's elevating her game by being able to hit in the mid-range, getting to the basket. Mike Sell is elite at reading the defense and reacting appropriately. Inside to Holmes. Ooh. Works right around Mikola Shakova. If she gets into that restricted area and you get her the ball, that is an automatic bucket. McMahon, everything but the finish. Indiana's won three straight against Ohio State, including in the Big Ten Tournament semifinal last season. As Berger draws a foul on the jumper and two shots coming. But she can get to the basket real quickly because of how quick she makes the move. If you're a fan of Big Ten women's hoops, which I'm sure you are I because am. you're watching this game tonight. I know you are, Megan. Uh, like There's an that. Instagram account. Simply by slowing down, getting a rebound on this possession, and just trying to take a little bit of time to run your offense. There's the stop and the rebound. Scalia running the point. The transfer from Minnesota coming off a 7 for 10 night. And a top 15 win over Michigan. Scalia. Heavy with the floater, got her miss. And Megan, just a, a sort of shaking off the slump type of performance for Scalia, who had struggled a little bit going into that game, shooting especially from three. Scalia was three for five from three in that game. Holmes gets the bucket to go. But there is Scalia, somebody, the moment she gets the ball beyond the arc, the defense has to get out and get a hand up because she's a sharp shooter. Picked off by Garazon. Right inside the hole. Fantastic play by Indiana, starting on the defensive side of the ball. Holmes and Garazon switch. Garazon gets the steal, and it leads to a Holmes bucket. Drives hard to the basket, Cody McMahon. Perhaps no one drives harder, and Berger at the right place at the right time gets her feet. Berger, baseline, shakes her defender and leaves it in. What a move by Berger, absolutely willing her way to the basket on that. Get in the weight room. 9-0 Indiana run. Ten to shoot for the Buckeyes. McMahon with three. Bristow. Got the buzzer and it's off the mark. Indiana with a one-point lead at the end of the quarter on a 9-0 scoring run. Hoosier is getting it done defensively. The shag carpet when she was growing up were Indiana colors. Cream <laughs> and, of course, crimson. With her father, Dick. He watches all of the wins on Big Ten Plus from throughout the year during the summer. That way, he always has something to look forward to. And I just love that connection and support that she has from her father. A much needed bucket from Cody McMahon. That stops a 9 0 run that Indiana had. Holmes off the home run pass. Holmes at 6 3. There's no way Ohio State can lose her running down the floor. And it's even more key for the Hoosiers to get stopped. So. Ohio State can't set up the press. My goodness, Taylor Mikesell just understands angles so well. And she can shoot off balance. Two on two for Indiana. Garrison tied in the foul. How much
much fun is the freshman guard yarding Gary zone. Gets down, absorbs the contact. Mikola Shakova is still moving, so it is a foul. And Garrison just creates enough space. That is the second on Mikola Shakova. And in Big Ten play, her minutes have increased even more. Fans wanted to travel. It's dead 10 on the timer for Mike Sell. Zone. Absolutely fearless going to the basket, even though Ohio State was right there. How about that step through from the transfer, Ebony Walker. And wow. A turnover gives it back to Ohio State after Berger received the entry pass. That's the seventh turnover of the first half for Indiana. And that's just an unforced error, and players do this all the time. They grab the ball and just try to put their foot out of bounds to throw it in, but if the official's right there watching, you have to make sure your foot goes out of bounds. McMahon <laughs> turns the corner. Of course, coming off the third 20-point game of Big Ten play. Picked off by Mike Sell. McMahon right into the teeth of Berger. And it's an and one opportunity for the freshman. Berger did exactly what she should have done. Got to the spot to try to take a charge. She's inside the circle and was moving. But McMahon with so much body control. It's interesting, Megan. Kevin McGuff said in their loss, it wasn't. The fact that they lost, but how they lost. Felt like they didn't have the necessary effort and focus. <laughs> puts it in. Mike Sell threads it to McMahon. What court vision for the Oregon transfer finding the freshman. And McMahon is up to 15 points. get to the basket. Seven of 12, 17 points. I mean, just ridiculous in the first half as Holmes responds with the layup. New point because you know, State gets it back with no harm done. Harris draws a foul on Holmes. Ricky Harris at the line. It was going to be Madison Green running the point all year long for Ohio State. Coming back from that injury, she gets injured again. Huge stepping in to fill a void. And case in point right here, Bristow understands the scout. Berger loves to shoot in the mid-range, and so she didn't let Berger have a clean look at the basket in the mid-range. That's two. The right. Holmes ripped away by Walker, but a foul. But Walker has to do a better job of not letting Holmes get that deep of position. If you're going to try to get right behind Holmes, you got to get her out of the paint. Uh, Terry Morin calls her the cheat code. <laughs> really good defense. Up ahead to Mike Sell. Double clutch and lays it in. For the Buckeyes who have made their last three field goals. Ooh. Fancy handles by Garazon. Offensive rebound by Meister. And draws a foul. Right now. Oh, Billy Meister. Played 11 minutes against Michigan with Holmes in foul trouble. And now being rewarded with some early minutes. Less than a minute to play in the opening half. 10 to shoot for McMahon. Spins through the defense and draws two shots. Like a ballerina out there. She had 21 in the game against Iowa. Down to Holmes, through contact. Mike Sell with the ball. 
McMahon with five. Shoe made. Flutter won't go. Five seconds. More McNeil at midcourt. And rejected at the buzzer by Cody McMahon. What a first half performance for the Ohio State freshman. Finished with 18. Meanwhile, Indiana 18 and 1. They have won three out of the last four games against top 25 opponents. And both teams projected one seeds in the NCAA tournament. Garzone. And still the three-point woes continue for both teams. Now a combined two of 16 from downtown. Theory, good jump stop. Beat it past Berger. Theory also just staying so patient. I don't think there's anything in the world that rattles her. The moment she gets the ball, she just stays so poised. Berger right back the other way, back door. Versatile wing player in the game, Megan. She scored in double figures in four straight games, including 20 against Iowa on the Big Ten Network. Fouls could become a real storyline in this game. Multiple players on the floor right now with two or more. Theory, of course, picking up her third. Nikola Shakova with the mismatch. Everything but the finish. We've had a couple good moves inside from both teams who just can't get the finish to go. Berger only took three shots in the first half. She was one of three. Gets on for three. Ohio State completely lost gear zone on that possession. She was just hiding out in the corner waiting for her opportunity. Man, 18 in the first half through all kinds of traffic. Breaks that plane of verticality. Comes down a little bit. And credit McMahon for drawing the foul. But I've been impressed with the adjustments, especially from Ohio State on Holmes. Push more and not happy with that call at all. So just forcing it to be harder to get the ball down inside to Indiana's homes has been huge for Ohio State. McMahon missed them both. Meanwhile, the third foul on Sydney Parrish and both coaches rolling the dice on a beautiful backdoor cut and one for Chloe Moore McNeil. Movement without the ball is huge. Moore McNeil able to get Mike Sell to look the other way, then comes off that screen hard, catches it in rhythm, one, two, step like Sierra, and finishes it. <laughs> Moore McNeil needed that bucket. by Ohio State. It's a good eye, Megan. Hey, I got to review it on a screen. The officials had to make that in real time. That, that was a tough <laughs> call to make, and they got it right. Pass for three. That's a big shot. Oh, my goodness. Just fall down. McMahon doubled, and she walked. McMahon loves to spin, and Berger comes over to prevent the spin, and McMahon was not expecting Berger to be right there. For McNeil, out to Garzone. <laughs> Offensive foul. 14-0 Indiana run. Taylor Theory picked up that offensive foul. That was her fourth. That was the risk of keeping her in the ball game. And now she heads to the bench, and instead it's Evan Bristow for Ohio State. Another for Garzon. Timeout, Ohio State. 17-0 run for the Hoosiers. And Garzone has three triples in the second half. Ohio State was leading this game by five. What happened that Indiana has gone now on a 17-0 run? Well, the Hoosiers have hit shots, but mostly Ohio State simply hasn't been able to get it stopped defensively. And finally, McMahon's able to break the drought. Her first points of the second half. She had 18 in the first. More importantly, stops a 17-0 Indiana run. Holmes 
to Parrish. Indiana cuts so hard to the basket, and hard cuts lead to open looks because you catch your defender off guard. Picked up by Garzon into the front court and lays it home. Sell. Bristol with two. And it's scooped away by Moore McNeil. Four straight games of double figures, including 20 and 9 against Iowa. Five to shoot for Garzone. Defensive foul. That was the third foul on Rebecca Mikolashikova, who's still gripping that left elbow. 20 on the timer for Indiana. Kalashikova just picked up her fourth. Two fouls in a span of 10 seconds. Her in that type of situation is going to be huge for Indiana. They have to take advantage of, of Holmes now being in the paint without that 6'4 size. He's a 6'0 walker and a 6'3 Holmes. Now, Megan, you played a long time in this league. You cannot let the crowd get you. It's been loud inside of here. Ohio State needs to get to the basket and get to the free throw line. Indiana's made seven of its last nine field goals. They trailed by four at the half. Five to shoot for Berger. Down to Holmes. Beats the buzzer, counted in the foul. Berger, Holmes, they've been playing together a while. They've got that chemistry and connection. Holmes so physical, gets the right angle down low, but Berger, for that pass to zip through, And a little token pressure here from Lexus Bargesser. Up ahead to Harris. Floater. Won't go, but she draws a foul. Ohio State 9 of 14 from the line tonight. Particularly on the road, because this crowd gets more life with each miss at the foul line. And Harris missed them both. It is all Indiana. They Freshman. 42 of Indiana's 59 points have come from those two young ladies. And their zone really was a shot in the arm for this Indiana team. To missed most of that third quarter for Ohio State with four fouls. When Deary went out of this game, Indiana was able to go on that run. Indiana outscored Ohio State 27 to 6 in the third quarter. Home run pass to Theory. Now McMahon, double, out to Mike Sell. That's a three, and the first of the half for the Buckeyes. We got a shootout. 13 point deficit, 8-10 to play for Ohio State. They have overcome a couple of large double digit deficits this season. Will they count the bucket? Yes, they will. Then she comes down here and just makes the play, scoring through the contact. That's the offense that they missed from her in the third. Foul trouble, an issue for the Buckeyes. Mikola Shakova still on the bench with Berger. Buries a three. Ohio State still pressing. 62-49, seven and a half left. Mike Sala, three. Quickest release. She just needs a second to look at the basket, and she feels confident shooting. Scalia. And through the rebound. That last made bucket by Mike Sala counted as a deep two. <laughs> Theory can't finish. Harris. Uh, and oh, that goes off of Garzone. Mike Sell, step back, 
Yes. The Hoosiers have handled this Ohio State press well in the second half. Only three turnovers in the second half. They hit 11 in the first. You knew Ohio State was going to go on a little bit of a run here to start the fourth. Three on the timer for Holmes. Steps it through. Left to left and one. And you get the Soros to come up with other words besides patience and poise. But look at Mackenzie Holmes just saying so patient. So last second Holmes spins back. Draws the foul. The door is open ever so slightly for the Buckeyes. A top 10 scoring offense in the country. Harris a three. Yes. And it's back to single digits. Ohio State has been down by 17 in one game, 19 in another this year, and have come back in once. This is a Buckeyes team that's very capable of scoring in bunches. Holmes, tic-tac-toe. She is the first person down the floor so many times for the Hoosiers. Harris draws a foul. And Holmes doesn't let her land. Down 18 in the second half, overcame that. That was the largest second half comeback in program history. And then recently in Big Ten play, down 17. Indiana has to focus on continuing to break the press for the rest of this game. Harris now two of five from the foul line. Ohio State, 13 of 22 as a team. They've left a lot of points on the strike. Berger, Parrish playing with four fouls, draws one, and it goes against Ohio State. At this point, you just leave all these players in with four fouls. I mean, Mikola Shakova has been on the bench this entire quarter. As Parrish gets the foul and bounce, and he'll leave Cody McMahon in as well. He's been the leading scorer tonight. Good rebound by Parrish. the fifth on Cody McMahon without their leading score Buckeyes down 10 450 to play in Bloomington so a 10 point lead for Indiana Parrish makes it 11 so now where do you go if you're Ohio State the Buckeyes have to find opportunities for Mike Sell to get threes, whether that be in screening action or cover coming off of double screens, an elevator screen, whatever it might be, get her open shots from three. Parrish now up to 11 points. That gives her her third double-double this season. As Walker backs it in. So interesting with a team with this many new players, seven, including a few transfers like Parrish. There wasn't really a whole lot of feeling out process with this team. And again, remember, Grace Berger missed eight games with an injury. And yet, this team just kept on rolling. Into Parrish. And more McNeil comes away with it. And then a foul to boot. And that was the fifth foul on Ohio State. So now Indiana also shooting free throws the rest of the way. Both teams in the bonus over the final 241 after this game on Big Ten Network. Ohio State needs a bucket on this possession. They go to Theory. Nearly picked off by Garzon. Theory won't get it. Walker tips it into the hands of Mike Sell. Theory a third chance. Rejected by Garzon. 15 to shoot. Theory will not be denied. Puts it in off the window. Talk about finishing the possession. Ohio State making it much harder on themselves. You've got to make your layups. Nine point game, less than two minutes to play. Parrish. Second chance, draws a foul. That was one of the things that Kevin McGough pointed to in the loss to Iowa. I just felt like they didn't have enough effort, enough toughness, enough fight in the post. Indiana has been the tougher team in the second half. They came out and punched Ohio State hard with a 27-6 onslaught in the third quarter. And it's been all IU ever since. 
Hawkeyes doing their best to hang in this down 10. Mike Sell, no. Walker. And the rebound pulled away by Garzon. You start to play the foul game here if you're Ohio State or just let the possession play out. I just let the possession roll right here. Berger with five. Step back. Yes! Absolutely lethal in the fourth quarter. And a timeout by Kevin McGuff. When it's the fourth quarter, Megan, it is burger time for IU. McMahon fouled out with 21 points, their leading scorer tonight. And Mika Rashikova spent most of the second half on the bench with four fouls, and it's an offensive foul. Go out and do what you have to do. Do your job. And, Megan, that's all they've done in the second half. Barring anything crazy, this will be Indiana's sixth top 25 win this season. They are undefeated against the AP Top 25. And can you imagine with them hosting the tournament like they did last year, but how rocking this place is going to be? Almost picked off by Berger. 43 seconds left. Walker's three off the mark. Tracked down by Taylor Theory. Short. Theory, third chance, no. Walker the board, and finally a foul. That is the fifth on Mackenzie Holmes, and what a night it was for the senior from Gorham, Maine. A standing ovation for fourth straight game with 25 points or more. Consistency has been fantastic, but Holmes just doesn't get flustered. She's terribly difficult to guard. It's interesting you say that. She doesn't get flustered. She sort of embodies that for this team. Then they're at Minnesota and at Purdue for that classic in-state rivalry. And for Ohio State, they take on a Purdue team at home on Sunday who just came away with a win on the road against the top 25 Illinois. The Boilermakers playing really well as the fans at Assembly Hall can taste it. Their sixth top 25 win of the season. And their fourth straight win against Ohio State. <laughs> Megan talked about it. The home court advantage here at Assembly Hall. Indiana will advance to 12-0 and at home this year. And a sellout crowd. 10,455. See Indiana... Pick up their first win against the top two teams.